I'm learning how to manage my emotions, okay? All right, so we have the upstairs and we call that the library. Um, the reason being is that we have a large portion of books you see in this footage here uh, for that we want to, and it'll create some, kind of a small library feel. Most people would call this a living room. We're calling it the library. So we're book people. Uh, and so we definitely want to make this room reflective of that in our own unique way. So what does that mean? It means that this room probably has the biggest changeover from before and after. I want to take out the nasty white carpet, the plan is, and then put down some nice hardwood flooring, probably a darker wood. And then we'll um, replace the banister with a darker wood and wrought iron um, banister going all the and way And it's baby down. safe. As you can see here, uh, these are pictures from Ex Libris. It's the college of Savannah College of Art and Design, what their bookstore used to look like many years ago. And you can see the columns were wrapped in books. And it's got rather whimsical look to it. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to probably get Gaylords of books. And we are books. big Harry Potter fans. Yes. And so when you get that, that wrapped column effect, mm -hmm. when you think of it as the bookshop flourish and blots. Flourish and blots. So we kind of want to emulate this concept across all the walls in this room with with books. And so it would literally feel like there are books head to toe wrapped around you. Some of them, most of them not real books. They're part of the decor. But then we have our real books on these shelves and that we're able to we're, we're work also within talking the system. About um, shaving off the spines of books yeah. and framing the doorways with them and the lower half of the walls down the hallway. Yes, yes. So here is a Gaylord of books and we pretty much filled up the van with it. Okay, you have to start over. Because <clears throat> you don't sound like yourself when you're talking like that. You sound tired and like you're on Benadryl. <laughs> right now I sound like I'm on Benadryl? <laughs> <clears throat> That's not you. Okay. Just be yourself. I'm trying to be. So here is a Gaylord of Books. It's a four foot by four foot by four foot box. And it's big. Filled up the entire van. It, I actually had trouble getting home. I was a little bit worried about the frame. <laughs> okay guys, we're gonna start the library project. And what has mom already said? I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I can do this. Yeah. I mean, Barbie can go, but I'm keeping this book. Garrison Keller cannot go. We're already finding a ton of books that we want to keep. Okay, so here we go. There we go, and, and there's more in even the more back there. Okay, let, we gotta start unloading this, okay? Yeah, so it took us uh, an afternoon to really unload the van here, and it was a hot, muggy day. I counted it as my workout that day. I literally logged it in my workout vlog. <laughs> you can actually see the van <laughs> starting to slowly lift up. I see the that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tremendous, and this is only one Gaylord. I think we might need about two or three to fill up the entire um, living room. Uh, but it took us quite a while. There were a lot of books and a lot that we wanted to keep. A lot that we are keeping. That we, yeah, that we will keep. <laughs> that they just got added to the library. And I do want to warn you, this might seem a little troubling. Graphic. Yeah, so we're cutting a lot of these books, so I apologize to the book lovers out there, uh, but this is an art project. It's not meant to uh, help our uh, library out. One column, we want to go there, another column to go here. I would like to say a word to our Charlotte Mason watchers. We only cut the books that were twaddle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't we, know what that means. We but. kept everything that was a living book yes. or worth keeping. There you go. That's what I would say. But you can see we definitely went through. We're, we've, we're going through a tremendous amount of books here for the. And I mean, that's the leftovers. Now, we haven't talked about the wood pile. That's coming in a garden episode later. But, you know, my, my bud, Derek, there, he got a pretty good amount of uh, dust. <laughs> And you can see here, we try to test out, it's going to be a quarter of a column and, you know, 
just laying the cut up books on the side so it's not gonna be a full column um but we're here we're just trying to you know i don't know what we're doing here but figuring it out as you go pretty much yeah pretty much we're figuring this out as we go and um seeing what books will match in height so that this will kind of you can see that we're kind of like taking one book out bringing another book in measuring it it was a little bit more difficult than i had kind of imagined books were harmed in the making of this art project that is true and, and, uh, and again we apologize to the triggered individuals the book lovers out there but hey we love books too um, but yeah. ticked off with myself because I had broken the bolt. Um, after five attempts to get the broken bolt out, uh, I made it worse. And basically, now we're literally taking half of the engine apart. We're taking off the tire, we're taking off the timing belt, we're taking off the crankshaft because we have to get to the front cylinder head. Um, it's a lot more invasive than I had ever anticipated, but the thing is, is that if I don't do this, the car pretty much is toast because the uh, repair itself would probably be in the area of more than what the car is worth. And right now we're not looking at buying a new car. So we're trying to do the next best thing. And that is to literally replace half the engine, the cylinder head up on the front. We're going to take that out, um, go to a junkyard, get a new one, put that in. Let's see what happens. And thanks to my friend Derek, because I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for him. Now, I will try to explain this as best as I can. I've got a few diagrams here. Now, this is the part of the engine called the cylinder head. This is the part that has the broken aspect to it. It has to be removed. Now, if you notice over here, these three openings, that's what the cylinder head sits on top of. Now, in this next diagram here, you can see this is the cylinder block, which is what the cylinder head sits on top of. Notice the three openings. That's exactly where the cylinder head is attached and the cylinder head is what I'm trying to remove now in order to do that you've got to go all the way down to the bottom of the engine to remove all of the types of, of belts now you can see here on the side of the engine that's where the belts are located now right here is the top now this is where the spark plugs are at where I was initially trying to remove real easy to get to no big deal on top of the cylinder head is the cylinder head cover and you can see that that is right here and then right beneath it this is the cylinder head you can kind of see it is behind this black part now this bolt right here this is the one that I actually broke and I broke it inside the cylinder head and so that is the problem that I'm facing here now so down here at the very bottom of the engine is the crank shaft this is the hardest part to remove because it's the most, I guess you could say, delicate. I don't know. So in order to get the crankshaft bolt out, we had to pick up this crankshaft pulley holder. Now, as you can see here, we're placing it in, and this is a manual operation. It takes a lot of force. You've got to basically lock the bolt in. That's what this piece does. And then allows you to turn it at the same time. I know it's confusing, but that's what is true, uh, in order to unlock it. Now, we tried for, uh, seriously, a couple of days to get this done manually. And then, as you can see here, we brought in a compressor and we got a compressed impact wrench, which is a professional tool. And this compressor went to 150 PSI. And as you can see, we, uh, we gave it a shot. unfortunately it just wasn't powerful enough now you can even see here we even went out and I found out there's this this is called a harmonic socket and this I'm not joking this is true this is a harmonic socket this is meant to help to increase the pressure this associated with the uh, compressor impact wrench would not work so I finally uh, broke in and bought this this is a actual impact wrench as well 
um, but it had a lot more torque to it. And so with the impact wrench, it, as you can see, it got the bolt out. It was a lot of work. Um, we had to invest in a, a professional grade tool. That it looks like a drill, but it's not. Uh, and it finally got the job done. And once you're able to get it unscrewed, then you can see here, this is the serpentine belt that has to come off that where the crankshaft sprocket is at down the bottom. So this belt has to come off and then um, the entire piece, as you can see. And then after that, we also behind it is the timing belt. And this belt also has to be removed. As you can see here, this is the crankshaft uh, bolt at the bottom connecting it all. But then it also shows the cylinder head um, and how this belt connects everything and why it has to be removed. So that's just a couple of the pieces that have to be removed. Now the cylinder is connected on the top, the bottom, and literally all four sides. So what you're seeing us do is remove all the different pieces so that we can get the cylinder head out. Not <laughs> an easy task at all. All right, after quite a bit of work, we finally got the cylinder head out. So now this is the part that we need to replace. And that took quite a bit of work, but you know, they always say it's easier to rebuild, right? And that the, it's easier to rebuild than to take apart. And the, no, that's not it. Felicity, did you find Bubba's coffee? Mm -hmm. You drinking it? I don't that. Is it delicious? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, that's really not good for babies. Is it yummy? Mm-hmm. Doing a good job with that cup. I got to Okay, can I have it now? Mm-hmm. Thank you. No, It's not water, it's coffee. Yeah, I say coffee. Coffee.